say winners win and uh, you know not to downplay it but and defense wins championships so uh, all the things we talked about in our program kind of came came true and now we now we have to go do it but uh, um, but yeah it was a fun night to be a Chiefs fan eat really good chili and good buffalo chicken dip I guess is what you call it so it was a Fun night, but uh, um, yeah, back at it. Um, obviously, coming off a game that uh, um, we didn't play very well down the stretch. I thought we did a lot of really good things throughout. Um, really um, didn't mind our shots, uh, but I didn't. Uh, we had no stop. We had no ability to stop them defensively. Um, I think they scored nine out of ten possessions. Um, we're making um, a lot of we were, we we were making a lot of mistakes. We and we did make a lot of mistakes just in uh, uh, simple scouting report stuff, uh, and then simple fundamental things that we do. Um, we are very proficient on the offensive end. I think we're five in the country. Um, and it's a very, very false sense of reality that you can rely on that to win you games when it counts. And we have to, we have to, we have to become better defensively. We're soft. Um, we were very soft. We committed three and ones in the last three and a half minutes. Uh, when you're committing and one fouls, it means you're very passive and and not very aggressive. And I didn't like that very much. So. Uh, we've addressed that. We got a group that's very mature uh, in the locker room. They understand. They have they have a very high care factor, and uh, they know we they feel like we let one uh, we let one get away. And uh, um, you know, as when you're up eight with seven to go and on the road, you 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 want to be able to close that game out. Just as we went the other way at Ohio State, up eight and turn it into a 15 point game. And as we've uh, you know, as we've done, you know, at Ann Arbor the first time we played Michigan, uh, and we just didn't do it in this game. So, um, you know, now we turn to a Michigan team that uh, uh, beat Wisconsin uh, at home and, and played very good, and then um, you know, coming off a game that wasn't their best um, at, at, at Nebraska, but a, a ran into really a bust off. Nebraska played great, and. Um, uh, you know, this is a talented Michigan team. Uh, obviously, to beat Wisconsin, they, they've, they've proven their talent level. Uh, and we're going to have to be good. They're one of the top offensive rebounding teams in the, in the Big Ten, if not the top right now. I uh, get about 13 a game. We can't give them easy baskets. Obviously, Taurus Reed and, and Olivier um, create some, some issues. And, and then Llewellyn has been absolutely phenomenal um, in his starting role. So uh, he's been really one of their best players. So uh, expect a hard game and uh, uh, we got to play, we got to play much better, much tougher than we did uh, the other night. Coach, what, what are some of those specific things you're seeing defensively, both, you know, both in the mistakes s- and in the kind of in game, what, game planning and strategy? Not that. I mean, why, why can we do it for 85 minutes or for 35 minutes and, and not do it for five, the last five? You know, just a simple, we had a great plan and we'll link all. Uh, we've been getting beat, uh, and I'm not going to go into a lot of things. But, you know, I want our opponents to know, but um, you know, just 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 simply, you know, guard the ball. Uh, we haven't done a very good job of that. Uh, but you know, we fronted Malik most of the time. We had they they have Michigan State has no five man who can shoot a shot outside of two feet. So Coleman's playing soft. He's there for support, and yet we let Malik catch it. Uh, that's that's that can't happen, um, you know. So it's it's one of those things we've got to we got to get cleaned up. It wasn't just it wasn't just uh, those situations. There was a couple others, but uh, and then the and one fouls. Um, that's just being soft. But it's like after a couple like the Northwestern loss, that loss. You talk about like blowing switches defensively, but on the other hand, like that's been such an effective defense for you that the five ways to like. Is there a balance to? It actually has not been very effective. Okay. The numbers will show quite the quite the contrary that, that it has not been. 
Um, we utilized that. Uh, it was something we went to with TJ out uh, because it basically put Coleman in a situation who's our best defender to, to, to guard the ball. Uh, but the numbers show that it has not been. And um, you know, we, we didn't go to it. Uh, we're, you know, we're still s switching some perimeter stuff, but uh, um, this didn't have anything to do with the switch. We blew one switch, which Malik Call hit a three, um, and, and TJ got uh, hung up on a, on a, on a being physical on that play. So it wasn't that. Uh, Terrence had 28 against Michigan State. He's averaged 23 over the last three games. What have you seen from him that started to work again, maybe? Um, and is, is, it, is it safe to say he's back up to full speed? I think he's up to full speed. I, you know, I had no idea that many points. Uh, you know, we, 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 we ran two or three actions to him. Uh, when Terrence is at his best, he scores organically. He scores within the flow of the game. He scores um, in easy opportunities. The one thing I'm ecstatic about with him was he got on the offensive glass. He got four points on offensive rebounds. Uh, there's there's a whole nother level of offensive production for Terrence on the glass. And uh, I think he was 88th going into it in Big Ten play in, in offensive rebound. At 6'6", 220, that's not great. And and yet you talk to him about it, and he, he made a pointed effort to go, and he got some easy baskets. So, uh, But I think he's in a great place, and, and uh, uh, I think he's 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 finding his opportunities when they're there. Anything notable about Michigan without Doug McDaniel? Well, it's playing great. I I mean they're you know they're they're playing um, you know he plays a lot of minutes. Uh, Namari Nemar, Burnett's coming in and and he's kind of a been a backup backup point guard when Llewellyn's out. He's been really really solid. Um, you know I, I think that. Uh, you know, they maybe lose a little speed and, and, and quickness, but uh, um, you know I, I, don't, I don't see a different much difference. They're running the same stuff, um, and Llewellyn's just been a guy who's who's fit right in and, and really hasn't missed a missed a beat, in my opinion. You mentioned maybe the, having a false sense of reality with a top five offense. Have you seen that seeping in defensively? Where I mean, Marcus said something Saturday where you know, they get caught up in. You're trying to execute an offense and maybe don't do that enough defensively. Yeah, and I, you know, it, it, I think you, 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 I have to watch for that, you know, and then trying to make offensive substitutions to keep spacing and to keep guys in position so that we can stay effective. And, and um, you know, maybe I have to shift a little bit and, and be more conscious defensively. We have guys who can guard multiple positions. Uh, I think we were as high as seven. I think we're nine, maybe one time defensively. We're forty now. Uh, it's not like we're horrible, but it's it's again we've got to we've got to create a, um, a a desire when the game's on the line to get stops, and and we have to do that. What was the message to Luke? It seemed like late in the game he was getting frustrated defensively about what he was asked, being asked to do or not being able to do. Yeah, I got to help. I had to help him. We got to we had to create. Everybody's trying to you know put him in situations and isolations and 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 uh, you know we got to try to try to help that. We need him offensively. Um, you know he's 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 very good. It's not just him, but um, you know everybody's uh, uh, you know physically gives up some size when he's guarding fours and and uh, I got to do a better job of, of of trying to help him and put him in situations to be successful. Coach, it seems like uh, how coaches elect to guard ball screens is having a huge effect on games all around the conference and the country. And what does the analytics tell you as far as you know, what's most effective and what's not? We're one or two in the Big Ten in ball screen coverage. Um, we're very, very good in that. That is one of the things that we have been very good at in our time here. Uh, it's why we do it. Uh, it's the way we, why we play it the way we play it. Um, you know, we've we've um, um, maybe not seen as much of them, you know, outside of Northwestern as we've seen. You know, Nebraska doesn't ball screen hardly at all, um, and to be honest, Michigan State doesn't either. Uh, there's very few of them uh, in those games. But um, you know, it, it's every game's got its own identity. Every every coverage is is different. You know, we're. We're able to do some things with Coleman that we that, that a lot of teams can, but yet we're uh, 
uh, it's one of the things we've been really good at. I think we're 18th in the country, maybe, in our ball screen defense. So I think we've been, one of the analytics we've been great about. Obviously, in your last matchup in Ann Arbor, uh, Coleman had a big impact defensively. I know he's, if not your best defender, one of your best. Is it possible to ask more out of him on that end of the floor yeah, than you absolutely. are? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, uh, you know, there's, you guys know me by now, I'm never satisfied. That's, right. there, there's always another place to get to. And, and um, you know, Coleman's values is not just what he does physically, it's his, it's the mental, uh, his ability to make the calls, his ability to, uh, help the perimeter defenders. He calls. He knows the perfect time to make ball screen calls so that they can they can adjust. That's an art to that. Um, you know that's that's not an easy thing to do. Uh, he knows exactly when to help. He, he's he's very very good at that. Does he have to protect the rim better? Yeah, absolutely. And and he picked up a second foul and one that he knows better than. You know, he just stayed on the ground. He was vertical, but he stayed on the ground. New rule says you've got to, you've got to, you've got to go vertical. You've got to jump. And if he jumps, he doesn't uh, commit the second foul. And obviously, he had a technical, which counted as a foul. And that was a huge impact in the game. We go from up eight to down, you know, or up eight or so to down eight very quickly with, with him out. Was the messaging or conversations with Ty? And was there anything you were looking for? You would have been looking for more out of him down this stretch um, at Michigan State. No, Ty played. Ty played really well. I should have probably played him. Um, I, I think the, the one thing I found was we were we had a good we had a good thing going offensively with spacing. Um, you know, spacing changes a little bit in what we're doing. With, with Ty in terms of different positions because it creates different matchups uh, as teams cross matches. Um, you know, we liked what we were getting with Coleman. We liked what we were getting, uh, you know, with Marcus. Uh, unfortunately, we missed a couple layups off drives and and, and Coleman missed one, but um, the, the looks are great. And it, it's, and you know, Ty had a dunk that they went up through the bottom of the rim and didn't call. Um, but uh, he's playing great. Ty's playing. Ty's playing really well on the offensive end, and and uh, we got to get him back guarding and be in the presence that we know he can be on the on the defensive side. Yes. From an offensive standpoint, nationally, I think yeah, the offensive efficiency efficiency is at least trending to be the highest it's ever it's been since people started paying attention to that. And just what do you feel has may have led to that? Both, I mean, obviously for your team, and then maybe coming across the board. Well, I, you know, I, there's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, you know, I think pace of play. I think this league's playing fast. Um, I think this league's a good free throw shooting team for the league. I think we've shown that. I think offensive rebounding all plays into it. There's so many factors that go into offensive efficiency. And, and uh, you know, I, I think we've seen officiating and the rules that we have today impact that with the, with the charge block and and some of the the, the, the fouls. Um, but uh, you know, I think we got a group of coaches who understand offense and and um, what they, you know the, the game's ultimately trending toward the NBA game. No matter what we want to think, or we wish we played by their rules uh, instead of the ones we have. But uh, uh, but yeah, it, it's it's a challenge to. Uh, um, to stop people sometimes, and we get, and I think we get some of the best guards in this league that we've had in some time as well, from top to bottom. I think everybody's guard play has been, been been really, really good. A lot of possession games late. Um, what, are, what are some of those late game um, points that you've made to your team, and you know how to close games out? In the, Which one? In the, what the, Nebraska, Michigan State. So what about? Ohio State, what about we close those out? I, I mean, if you're going to nitpick on one or two, then nitpick on the good ones too. You know, talk about those because you want to make a story. We turn the ball over. Look at the shots we get. Go, go back and pull the film. I'd be glad to go over the film with you. What shot didn't you like? Uh, we turned it over twice. We didn't lose the Nebraska game. Um, you know, where we didn't. We didn't lose the game because we turned the ball. We lost the ball because we didn't guard. Stop from nine out of ten possessions. Uh, rematch game difficult when you've won the first game of that season series. Every game's got its own identity. I think everything's you know home courts. 
I mean, was there a better environment than East Lansing? That might be the best environment I've been in since I, well, maybe Maryland. Best environment I've been in since I've been in the lake. Uh, that, pl that place was electric. Uh, emotions, it was their reunion game. They've got all their big guys there, I, you know, and then Michigan is, you know, is a, is a different deal. I think it's just really hard. You gotta be, you gotta be really good. Uh, to go win on the road, you've got to match the emotion, match the intensity, um, you know, and that's that's what makes this league so good. You know, there's no day off. You know, there's you're not playing a you're not finding a, a bottom 250 team anywhere in this league. You're finding a, a a team that's really really good with really good players and really good coaches and environments that are just electric and and. Uh, um, you know, we've got to we've got to match that. On we've got to we got to find a way on on uh, Tuesday, at six o'clock to be to be great. Uh, they'll be they'll be amped because they they lost, and teams always play seem to play with a little better edge when they've got a they've got a uh, loss. What'd you like about Coleman and that booty ball role, and what can that do for you guys? Picture. Well, I think it's the, the first time we've really taken advantage of smaller guards on him. And teams want to teams want to put bigs on 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 uh, tie or they cross match like they did. Uh, they put uh, Sissoko on on Quincy and uh, and then Malik on on uh, on Marcus to try to put size on him. Then we we just found the option. You know, and Coleman was really, really effective in there. Uh, his ability to pass, uh, he had a really bad turnover, which he can't make uh, on a no look pass, which was, which was he understands. But uh, his effectiveness down there is, you know, we wanted to get fouled more. I wanted to get fouled down there. Uh, but he's a really good ball handler uh, in terms of being able to play in those spaces, and then he's got great, great feet. So. Um, you know, then he shot a little fadeaway where he can just jump over people. So it's a, it's been a nice uh, that's a nice nice thing to have. He's worked really hard at that. Amani has been this is questionable in the last few availability, availability reports. Where does he kind of stand in terms of things being available? Yeah, we're trying to get Amani back 100%. Uh, the back thing, he came back, he started practicing, he played, uh, and then all of a sudden it just it, it just went back. Uh, uh, the back's a tricky thing. Um, he's he was partially around yesterday in practice, but not doing anything live or full. And um, he's got a he's got. Uh, uh, we'll see. Maybe if that expands a little bit today, we'll see. But um, yeah, we want to get him 100 percent because we don't want just back for a game and then out for another five. We want this thing to be to be healed.